Hi everyone, here's Robin again, the Sudoku guy with tutorial number 34 and I just wanted to mention that this is about managing little numbers. When do you put them in? When don't you put them in? Just some suggestions anyway. So here we go. Here is a very difficult puzzle. Uh, the, the original puzzle was two, the black numbers. These, this was the originals. And then we started to solve the puzzle. And as we solved the puzzle, we got some of these numbers for sure, the red ones. And on the way, we naturally saw the opportunity to put in matching pairs. So we put those in as we saw the opportunity here and here. And in this case, it was a very obvious, it was a three by three because these were all taken up. That's basically the procedure that I suggest. But the time comes when you really get stuck and you don't know where to go next. And then that's the only time that I suggest that you take the time to put in all the poss possible numbers. Uh, that takes some time and you need to be accurate. I know some computers will give it to you, but take your time. I'm going to put them in. I'll be back in a couple of seconds, okay? Well, here we are back again, and if you have a look at the puzzle, you see that I've entered all these little blue numbers. They're the possible numbers, uh, and that's what you do when you really got stuck and you have to put in all the numbers. Now, in the, in, uh, the online, there's lots of... Uh, places online where they give you all those numbers uh, it's the purist will say really you should work it out yourselves but when you work it out yourselves you can easily make a mistake and this is what I do these are the steps that I take when I've done that just to revise by the way the black is the what we started with the red is what we solved including some small numbers like matching pairs here here and here and now we start to uh, work with all these numbers as well. Now, I will go from 1 to 9 and check to see if I put a little number in, a, line, a row or a column or a block, where there's already a big number. And that's easy to do when you're doing it yourself. So here's 1. Here's the 6. If I go along this row, guess what we come across here? There's another six, a little six. Get rid of that. That shouldn't have been there. Okay. Um, let me let me uh, get that a little bit cleaner. Okay. Then um, the next step is to look for a block somewhere where there's a number that can only be in a row or a column and nowhere else. Then this block here, this is a perfect example. You've got a a 5 here and a 5 here and there's no other 5 possibilities in this block therefore this 5 and this 5 being in a row in this block means that you can use the rule of exclusion and remove any other 5's in that row and if I go, go along here you'll see that there's a 5 here and there's a 5 here so you can get rid of those Great. The next thing I look for, is there a pattern somewhere? Is there a pattern somewhere? Well, yes, there is. Now, when you look at patterns, I'm talking about uh, diagonal cross, cleavers, mallets, all those sorts of things. They help you find answers as well. And well, I found a, a diagonal cross in this puzzle. We've got a three, three, and down here we have a three, three. When that occurs, you know that the three in this block must be in this middle column. And it just so happens we've got a three there, so we can change this and make it a big three, and we can get rid of this little one too, and this will become your main three. So that's the diagonal cross. Now there's another technique that I can use when you've got this situation, and that is what I call, there's only one way to go. Now with TMB and LCR, quite often you can go two ways in hard puzzles. But in this case, you've uh, got a situation where you can only go one way. Let's take this one. If I go one, 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 there's no one in here. 
So I cannot go that route. This is the only way we can go. One, one of these will be a one, and one down here, so it's top, middle, and a bottom. If that is the case, we can erase this one, and this here becomes a six. Now, what are the ramifications of that? Oh, it's amazing. If this becomes a six, I'll just do a couple of examples. This no longer can be a six. This can't be a six. This can't be a six, because it's all in the block. And once you've got this six at the center left, this becomes a six. Okay, so all those my numbers can go, and that becomes a six. And, uh, and if I were to take, let me see, if I take this six, the top, a bottom, this becomes a six over here. So from now on, it gets easy. But I thought I'd just share that with you. And by the way, did you notice there's a five here? That makes things happen. All, all, there's all kinds of things that can happen. Maybe you'd like to finish off the puzzle. So that's it for today's session. Bye for now.